everybody. This is Francesco Abruzzino, and today I have another guest, and his name is Risi Aresti. Did I say that correct, Risi? Well, it's either Aresti or Aresti, whichever okay, way Arresti you want to pronounce it. And uh, he is a college admissions financial aid expert. He has his new book out, which uh, has some great reviews here. Um, this book is uh, only a this book is not only helpful to families, but also great fun to read. Joseph Hurley, he's a CPA of America's Foremost Authors. But uh, welcome to the show. How are you doing? And um, let's talk a little bit about how to, to pay for college without going broke. Um, I, like I told you pre-show, my daughter's getting ready to go. She'll be going to college. I have two, actually. And I know this is a huge concern for everybody. Um, now, we did do Florida Plan, and I don't know how that falls into the whole grand scheme of everything, but I'll hand it off to you now. Okay, well, thanks for having me on uh -huh. the show. I appreciate it. And I'd like to say this uh, before we even get, get going. For anyone who hears the interview and sends me an email, I will be more than happy to give them a free consultation and a wow, free Wow, that'd email. be great. I'll, I'll put that on the email, too, when I send it out to everyone. The most important thing that uh, people need to realize is that in the financial aid system, students have no asset protection allowance. In other words, for every dollar that a student has in their name, they lose 20 cents per year in financial aid. Huh. Now that's pretty serious. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize that statistic. Yes. Most well, not most, but obviously a high percentage of families have custodian accounts for their kids or their grandchildren. And that money belongs to the student because it was an irrevocable gift. And you can't just take the money out of the account, take it back, and put it back in your name because that constitutes an illegal transaction. So would Florida plans fall? And they're there are really serious repercussions if anybody ever gets audited and they find out that you took back uh, a student's money and put so it back in your Florida own name. So do Florida plans fall under that? No, the Florida plan, like all the other state plans, are owned by some other individual, a parent or a grandparent, an uncle or uh -huh. whomever, and a student is the beneficiary. Okay. Because they're the ones that are going to get the college benefits. And it's the same thing with financial aid. The parents don't get the bill. The student does. Because they're the one who is going to attend. And parents have to realize that as well as being in the admissions process, and there's, there's something I've been, I've been telling families for <laughs> 35 years, all the financial aid in the world is useless without an admission ticket. Right, right. What's more important is getting in. <laughs> that And people often forget that, no? Or <laughs> yeah, right, of course they do. <laughs> uh, but uh, as far as um, not necessarily the, the admissions process, but the financial aid process, there, there are so many ins and outs, legal strategies that can enable separated or divorced parents from reducing, legally reducing the cost of college by as much as 90%. Anybody who owns a small business, there are ways to legally reposition money in that business, into that business, taking it out of your, your own name and repositioning it into the name of your business and reducing assessments on mm -hmm. assets. Because in the financial aid formulas, parents have an asset protection allowance. Now, Frankie, let me ask you something. How uh, old are you? Forty-seven. Okay. You and I'm yes. assuming you're married. Okay. In a two-parent family, at your age, the asset protection allowance is about thirty-five thousand dollars, and what? And it's been going down. In fact, last it went down twenty-five percent. And it's been going down every year for the well, past what's, four what's or five years. What's driving it down? Is that legislation or what? No, so that the colleges can get more money. But that, 
They're in cahoots well, with the I'm federal government. That is due to something like legislation. Like I see a lot now. We're going through the election process, and you keep seeing um, Governor Scott's commercial saying Chris took away uh, fifteen thousand or whatever per year and took a lot of money away from students. Does that then in turn have the colleges going out and trying to let, do what you're saying and look for another way to drive up that? Well, money? there 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 are so many there there's so many different avenues with what happened in the state of Florida. I mean, they were raising the, the state tuition by 15% a year. They put a cap on that. Um, it, it hasn't gone up that much over the last two years. But getting back to the, the asset protection allowance, as far as parents are concerned, what, the, what that includes is checking, savings, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate, other than your house. So if you and your wife and it doesn't include re retirement accounts. But so let, let's say you and your wife have $100,000 in assets and you don't own a small business. You just work for a living. You have $65,000 that's over the allowance and you're going to lose 5.64% per year on that money. Huh. Right. I, I, I didn't realize that. Well... Most parents don't until it's too late. Hmm. That's why a lot of groundwork needs to be done by parents to find advisors who can help them legally, morally, and ethically to cut the cost of college because it's just obscene. Now, and your, your book does that. And one thing I'm noticing on here, too, is you say 529s are better off for the colleges and not the students, which I always, I always thought they were savings for your kids to go to school and pay for it. Well, the truth of the matter is, the 529 plan is a parent asset. And because of the way the stock market's been going, now is a great time to be able to use it because the market is at a peak. But if your student isn't going off to college for another few years, surely the stock market will tank along with your 529 plan. Huh. And I can't tell you, uh, in all the years that I've been doing this, and, and as long as they've had 529 plans, I've seen situations, and this is very common, where they contributed $50,000 over a number of years, and the account was worth 49000 <laughs> They were in the red. Yeah, and you know what? A lot of people are expecting some drops in the market, so you may be pretty accurate with that 529 thing. Well, you, 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 the best time to buy a 529 plan is assuming the student is going to go off to college in the next four or five years after the market collapses. So time, timing's everything. Because you can't predict what's going to happen in 10 or right, 15 right. years. But we can surely predict what's going to happen in the next 6, 8, 10, 12 months that the stock market is going to take a big drop. And the other thing, a lot of people are in minimal tax brackets. So they have a situation where they've got $50,000 and they're going to lose now remember, fifty thousand is the value of the account, and let, let's say they have a modest gain of a couple thousand dollars. The tax consequence is minimal, but the assessment is on the whole thing. The tax consequence is only on the gains. If they didn't use the money for college and they closed the account out and repositioned the money where it wouldn't be included in the financial aid formulas. Interesting. Yeah, it is yeah, interesting, yeah. isn't it? And, and like you said, a lot of this stuff we're not aware of. But if someone gets your book, um, they will. Now you got a ton of stuff on here where you say how to know if ninety eight with ninety eight percent certainty that your chance of being accepted um, to the top one hundred fifty college. How can how do you how do you get ninety eight percent certainty of the, on there? Well, I'll be, I'll be honest with you. Uh, that that's an older quote that unfortunately yeah. was sent to you and. I have not been, I, I used to uh, do business with the company that assured that because th they had uh, a phenomenal uh, web yeah. presence and everything, but th please okay, ignore I was that. I say, quote. that's pretty hard to get 98%. <laughs> no, it, it was, it was valid about 10 years ago, and for some reason or other, uh, the, 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 web, the email was sent to you with an old uh, list of uh, bullet points, and that one okay, shouldn't have been Let included. me ask you this. On here you have, uh, the, there's four dates that are crucial when applying. Now, I, 
when should a kid start applying? Do they start applying in their sophomore year, or do, or do they like start looking and then in their junior year they start applying? When, what's that process, and when do the dates come into play? Okay, well, th- those the, those dates are re- relevant to the financial okay. aid process, and the first date is December thirty first of the tenth grade, and that's a crucial date for parents if the student is going to be applying to a college that uses the CSS financial aid uh, form. Okay. And um, actually, Miami joined the CSS a couple of years ago, and NYU and the University of Michigan, all the Ivy League schools, all these high, about 200 private and a few state colleges, like the Mm -hmm. University of Michigan, University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, they use the CSS financial aid profile, which is a, a much more detailed financial aid form, and it's available in October of the senior year to be completed. However, there's a look back to the uh, 11th grade, and the 11th grade is going to be after December 31st when the student's in the 10th grade. So if asset repositioning is done, prior to December 31st of the 10th grade, none of that information is going to show up on a tax return that's going to be included in the CSS financial aid profiles uh, questionnaire. That's a great piece of information. I didn't realize that. For all the other schools, it's December 31st of the 11th grade where asset repositioning, if they're not applying to a CSS, if they're only applying to, you know, let's say in Florida, all the mm-hmm. state colleges, because none of those, those schools use the CSS financial aid profile. So for asset repositioning, the absolute best time to do it, where it's not going to show up, there isn't going to be any repercussions or whatever, is by of the 11th grade. And we surely don't want to wait until right, the right, last right. minute. The next important date is January 1st of the 12th grade. Oh, could you, could you, oh, geez. Uh, I had another one, I'm not going to take it. Uh, January 1st of the 12th grade. That's when the FAFSA, free application for federal student aid, which every family has to fill out to get into the system, becomes available. It's only online. It used to be a paper application, and you'd mail it. And I can remember in early January where people would come into my office, and I'd help them out with the form, and then they would get out of the local a Boca Raton post office, and it'd be a huge line, and everybody was, was sending the, the information off to a P.O. box in Illinois, because that's where uh-huh. it was processed. Uh, so January 1st of the 12th grade is another crucial date, and there, there are really more than four, but the other crucial date is May 1st of the 12th grade, and May 1st is the traditional date for the um, non-refundable deposit for okay. colleges. And by that, they want you to make a decision by May 1st. And as long as you send the deposit prior to May 1st, you can still get a refund if your student happens to, let's say you sent in three deposits because you weren't, you weren't sure where the student was going to go and you wanted to secure a room in the dorm by, you know, February 15th or whatever. So you send a $250 deposit to the University of Michigan, and you did the same thing with the University of Tampa and maybe uh, Columbia in New York. By May 1st, you have to make a decision of whether you want to keep those deposits for possible negotiating the financial aid award that the student got to go beyond May 1st, otherwise ask for a refund of the deposit if the student isn't going to be going to one of those other schools that got Does that happen a lot, though, where they're that indecisive come their senior year around around that timeline? Well, people, unfortunately, know, but anybody who is in the business, like myself, makes people aware of the May 1st deadline that it's, it's not the end of the world. And what I've been doing with families 
is something called, and the colleges frown upon this, it's called multiple okay. depositing. When they get the award letter, which is the euphemism for the bill, <laughs> was I like that one. <laughs> kick out of that. Eh, because it tells you, here's what you're going to have to come up with, and this is what we want. And maybe there's a big gap, because if the, fa the let's say, here, here's the formula, okay, the financial uh -huh. aid formula. There's the cost of attendance, whatever the school charges, and l let's say the University of Miami, okay, let's say it's sixty thousand dollars of the cost of attendance which includes tuition fees room and board miscellaneous travel whatever and their expected family contribution based on the numbers that were filed on the FAFSA and the EFC includes parent and student income parent and student assets age of the older parent and number of dependents attending at the undergraduate level. And that, that's a complex number, but let's say it's $20,000. So you subtract 20 from 60, and the financial need is $40,000. And the University of Miami awards 25000 on the first award letter. So there's $15,000 of unmet need. Well, that's a lot. And it's like buying a new car. You don't go into a showroom and say, uh, you know, I'll, I'll take that uh, Cadillac um, in, in green. Oh, and what was the sticker price? That, that's right. not how you buy a car. And that's not how you so pay for college. You're saying it's almost negotiable then because I didn't realize that. Oh, not almost. Absolutely. Absolutely wow, positive. I did not realize that. I thought it was yes. like, here's the set price. Almost like when you go into any basic clothing store. Here's the set price. you got to pay it. No. Wow. Quite the contrary. Well, that's great news there. Well, here's the thing. There's the first offer. Why should the school give all the aid that they might wind up giving in the first round? If somebody takes the bait, tough. However, I have appealed about 95% of all initial awards. And when there are other schools in play, then we can negotiate and pit one school against wow, the other. that's interesting. And I, I do that and, all the and time. And so you'll help someone if they take you on. You basically guide them through this whole process then, right? Okay. Absolutely. Um, I have a, I have a fee-based practice. And there's a one-time fee for the entire uh, college career. And even I'll help students uh, get into graduate school and go over... So should they be contacting you somewhere in the first quarter of their sophomore year, and then you say, okay, for X amount of dollars, we'll follow it for the next two years, make sure we're getting all this stuff done? Is that is that the process? No. Okay. No. They should act sooner. Right now is a perfect time for families to call me before the student gets into the ninth grade. Okay. Because if I work with a student for four years... I assure you, they'll have over a thousand hours of community service under their belt, and that's equivalent to an 800 on an SAT really? score. They put that much yes, bearing on really. oh, community service, huh? Absolutely. Huh. One, one other thing about uh, small business. Yeah, I was going to ask about that because I'm a small business owner, and I saw that. Okay, well, if you have a small business and you have children, and you put them on the payroll, you can pay them. $5,900, and they'll be in a zero tax bracket. Two. How many kids do you have? Two. Okay. So let's say you pay your kids $12,000 a year. They won't, they won't pay any income tax. You know, you, you have Social Security, right. obviously. You have to fill out the 941s, you know, the quarterly returns, because they'll get wages. You don't have to withhold, you don't have to withhold any money as far as income tax, because there won't be any, that's the zero tax bracket. But I assure you, if you and your wife have $12,000 of earned income, you'll probably pay a few thousand dollars a year, a year in tax. Yeah, Is that not course. correct? So guess what? I just saved you a whole ah, ton so of money. You, so basically you pay that to your kids, you stay below the threshold, and then you're not getting taxed on it, and they're not getting taxed on it. Wow. Exactly. And the, the income protection allowance for students 
is $6,300. So you don't want to exceed that. So even if you paid your, your, your daughter, who's going to be going off to college, $6,300, she'd only be $500 over the income protection allowance, and the income tax on $500 is 50 bucks. Hmm. That's kind of insignificant, oh, yeah. wouldn't oh, you yeah. say? And you know what? This is great information. Now, um, we're going to put this out, and you may get some calls. What? Where do you prefer for people to call you or preferred methods of contacting you? Okay, so Both. Okay. my phone number is 561-362-7490. Or they can send me an email at R E E C Y. That's R E E C Y at paylessforcollege.com, and it's F O R. Okay, and you also have your site paylessforcollege.com, which uh, I have I've had up on here at yes. all times. And is there a link on contacting you on here? I see your number at the top. Yes, there is. anybody Anybody who goes on the website. And sends me an email and mentions your program, they'll get a free ebook and a free phone consultation right. and to determine the extent to which I might be able to help them. And I'll put that out when we put this out. Well, Reese, it's, Reese, it's been great talking to you. You, you know, one thing I love about these interviews is it educates you so much and you learn so many things that I wasn't aware of. And it looks like you're going to save me a couple dollars just uh, off this interview. Well, that's Absolutely. great. Um, this, I'll contact, you'll see this out. I'll send you a link with all the stuff. It'll preview on my live show today, and then we'll put out a separate one, and I'll send all that information to you. All right, thanks a lot, Thank right, you very much for day. having me. Bye. You too. Bye-bye.